Israel against Uzbekistan, round number 6 of Chess Olympiad 2024. Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Nitzan Steinberg. I'm your chess grandmaster here in this YouTube channel. And today, dear friends, we will watch together the fascinating match between Israel against Uzbekistan in round number six of Chess Olympiad 2024. You know, Uzbekistan were the winners of the previous Olympics. Did we manage to achieve the unbelievable? Did we fail spectacularly or did we give it all and come so close? Let's find out together. So the first game in this match we will be, we will see of course the Maxim Brochten in the first board or against Nodir Beg Abdusaturov. Let's see it. e4, e5, another three, knight c6, bishop c4. The Italian opening, knight f6, d3, bishop e7, and castle, castle, and rook e1. Until now, it's very common uh, position, but as you can see, uh, Abdul Satorov playing with the bishop e7 are not on c5. So d6 was played after d6, uh, the point for black is to play knight a5, right? For example, if we're playing the move a3, knight a5 and i don't know bishop b5 for example just a6 bishop a4 b5 bishop b3 and knight takes and this is just amazing position for black two bishops and you know just a better position so after uh, d6 white understand what the threat and it playing the move a3 to have the possibility to put this bishop on a2 King h8 was played c3 by Maxim Rochten wants, you know, like maybe to play d4 in the next future. And now the best move for black, I thought during this game, because I streamed it in live in my YouTube channel. So I thought knight g8 will be played by Abdul Saturov because he wants to play the move f5 with attack on this king. In the, king's in the king's side, of course. So, knight g8 was a little bit better move, of course. He played the move knight e7, and this was a little bit mistake, in my opinion, because now d4, uh, and Maxim is doing it perfectly, knight b6, and now bishop d3. And I'm not sure this, that this knight is doing great job here on b6. I'm not sure at, at all. And now, if you're playing, you know, he played the move bishop g4, but if he's playing the move f5, just white takes, bishop takes, just bishop takes, rook takes, and I don't know, also d takes e5 looks good, but also d5, and knight b8, I don't know, queen d3, c4, knight c3, the, pawn, uh, the square on e4 would be just amazing for white, you know, this position is looks really, really tough for black, so f5 is not working, so we play the move bishop g4, of course, attacking e takes d4, and because of this pin, right? So d5 was played knight b8 and now knight bd2. Uh, obviously also h3 should be a nice move, I think, because after bishop h5, maybe some g4 move. Bishop g6 and now c4, knight c3, uh, bishop e3. This square on f5 will be weak. f5 with black cannot be played any anymore. So this position looks also very good for, for my, in my opinion at least. Uh, so knight bd2 was played by Max. Also, I'm not sure about it because, you know, c4 and knight c3 looks more natural. But knight bd2 also makes sense because you want to bring this knight to f1, g3 and after it to play the move h3. So knight a5 was played, now h3, bishop h5 and b3. Also g4 uh, with bishop g6 and now b3 I really like. Oh, now knight takes d5 here. Sorry. But yeah, c4, c4 maybe. And after it, knight f1, knight g3, as we already saw. But uh, Max is playing the move b3, a very, you know, prophylactic move, because after a4, you will play the move b4 with c4. And also, you're just uh, disabling this knight on b6, is doing nothing here, right? So b3, very uh, prophylactic and good move by Max. f5 was played, c4. And now, I, I thought f4, it should be the move, because, you know, if you're not playing f4, uh, this bishop maybe will be uh, open, right? f4 and now, I don't know, something around knight uh, 8 to d7, c5, g5, bishop f6, queen e7, rook g8, g4, something around this one. 
and this bishop on d3 is not doing any job right so yeah after c4 he played the move f takes e4 for my opinion it was it was not the best here bishop takes e4 bishop f7 also and another uh, passive move uh, knight a d7 looks more more than fine knight f6 knight c5 you know some some somehow to develop your pieces uh, but f bishop f7 and now bishop d3 was played uh, i think a really nice move by max because he wants to bring the knight to e4 knight a6 queen c2 attacking this pawn on h7 bishop g8 now knight e4 and knight e7 bishop e3 just developing his pieces doing great you know the only thing that I, I can tell you about uh, Max style, he's playing very slow in the opening and after it is, you know, is in the time trouble and he makes a very good moves. But, you know, 29 minutes in the tw 20 moves, it's not so easy because you don't have so much time uh, for the uh, last 20 moves until the 40 moves. So, yeah, c6 now, knight c3 was played. Knight dc5, bishop e2. Now bishop f5 was a, a better option because after bishop e2, Abdul Saturov uh, had just amazing move h6, you know, to, to bring this bishop to this diagonal because this bishop uh, gone from this diagonal and now bishop h7 is very, very strong. Queen b2, e4, knight e4, bishop g5, queen d2 is playing very good, max. Uh, queen f6, bishop f1, another strong move, takes, rook takes, is bringing the last rook into the game, and now uh, g3 was played, another strong move, I think, also to, to have the possibility to play bishop g2, knight c7, b4, this was uh, probably the mistake, d takes c6 was a better option, because after b takes c6, you have now b4, and yeah, the dc6 pawn will be uh, very weak after this, right? So he played the move b4 immediately and now c takes d5. Very uh, important move by Abdus Saturov. And now after c takes d5, you know, just takes, takes, and I don't know, knight d3 or knight d7, probably knight d3. Uh, and yeah, bishop takes, just uh, queen d4, yeah. Yeah, attacking everything here. Yeah, not so easy also on the knight on d5. Yeah, probably. Uh, problem here for white so he took on d5 uh, max took on c5 d takes c5 and now knight db5 was played and knight takes b5 i thought maybe d4 yeah on, but the knight of course is under attack so knight takes and uh, knight takes d5 here was an another option to take uh, this knight on b5 with the knight but d4 rook b3 is not good because of e3 yeah rook e2 um yeah not so easy not so easy because as you can see the the whites pieces are doing nothing here so i don't know it's it's very difficult to understand so let's go in quickly because we have so much things to to show 95 was played queen d4 very strong move attacking the queen on d2 and now queen takes a5 96 queen c3 rook f7 and as you can see maxim with just uh, below one minute in the clock and it's very difficult to play against nodir back abdul saturov uh, with such low uh, time on the clock. Queen c1 was played, knight f5, knight d1, a uh, rook d1, sorry. Yeah, here, uh, this was the best move here, but after knight g3 here, you have rook d2, and then this knight is just gone, so knight g3 is not working, and maybe this one, uh, Max, uh, forgot about this. So we played move rook d1, queen e5, and now f4, and this is already very, very weak for this king, and b5, rook takes, knight g3, and... Yeah, the way here for win for black uh, was clearly, and the king on h2 is very weak, as you can see. Yeah, everything is collapsing here. Knight on d4 is very strong, and yeah, he's sacrificing rook, rook knight f3, and now queen f7, and that's it. Yeah, Maxim Brochten is losing in, here in the first board against one of the best players in the world, Nodir Beck. So, yeah, Max lost, so the position now is 0 for Israel and 1 for uzbekistan let's go for the second board we have idogorsten with the black pieces against nodir back yakuboev right yeah i yeah i hope i pronounce it right c4 e6 knight f3 d5 the catalan variation and opening bishop b4 check bishop d2 and coming back to e7 castle 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 and knight b7 queen c2 c6 and this until now i think I also familiar with his position. I, if I'm not mistaken, b6. This is the move here. But he played the move a5 after four minutes of thought, 
and rook d1 was played h6 knight c3 and now he took the pawn on c4 you know in catalan there is so much uh, theory and so much lines that white is you know like um bringing a pawn sacrificing a pawn for black and uh, for the initiative he's playing for initiative he's playing for you know develop pieces very fast very strong and uh, active right so as you can see 92 was played 96 and now e4 and a4 a3 bishop d7 h3 and now g4 as you can see white is getting some space uh, 9 f1 93 every move to develop and improve his positions and uh, 9 fd7 bishop g3 now he wants to control also with f4 with f5 you know white is is pressing yeah it's not so easy for for black to play and now he played the move c5 this was uh, probably the mistake of the game Um yeah the best here was to play knight f8 and after f4 f6 with f bishop f7 and this is you know like it's very ugly to to just to stand and hope for the best and maybe to you know like uh, to wait for for something uh, wrong that white will play uh, but this is very very dangerous of course it's not so easy to play but he played the move c5 because you know he, he felt like he needs to do something uh, but here after d5 is very very difficult takes takes rook d6 attacking the pawn as you can see all the black pieces are really really um, not developed and not in a good position very passive bishop f7 e5 was playing very strong because knight takes cannot be played rook takes b6 so bishop e7 going back another very interesting move was rook ad1 just sacrificing this rook uh, i don't need it uh, bishop takes just rook takes with 94 f4 f5 you know uh, the initiative here is just unbelievable there is nothing to do with black this knight cannot go anywhere this knight cannot go anywhere bishop on f7 just bad piece everyone here uh, are just doing uh, awful yeah rook d2 was played by no dear back knight b8 takes takes uh, bishop takes b7 yeah rook a7 rook d1 and this position is very very complicated uh, but very easy to play with with white pieces just take the pawn 94 takes takes knight f5 and now e6 yeah everything is going well for white queen c1 and yeah the game is over because knight takes h6 will be the next move with bishop e5 queen takes yeah it's a checkmate here very soon so another loss for the israeli team 2-0 for uzbekistan but hey never give up let's go for tamir nabati with white pieces against sindarov let's see d4 knight f6 c4 g6 and h4 what a move by tamir nabati with white pieces he wants to win and you know i said in the live stream that i have a feeling that tamir nabati will bring us the win home h4 you are you know it's just unbelievable to see tamir nabati is playing chess because he's feeling it he's feeling it and he's doing it just the best bishop g7 knight c3 d6 e4 and now bishop e2 knight f3 castle c6 uh, bishop e3 was played i thought during the game that he will play the move knight g5 because this square for the knight is just very looks good right uh, you know after h5 I don't know knight g5 looks really correct but bishop e3 was played b5 a3 bishop g4 takes takes and e5 and after d takes he, he took with the pawn i thought that he will take with the knight because bishop e2 queen takes with queen f3 rook f1 rook a d1 maybe d5 bishop g5 bishop c5 you know some ideas here for white uh, i don't know if it's so easy to play with the black pieces but uh, he took with d pawn, queen takes, rook fd1. I can tell you that I know Tamir Nabati so much years and he really likes to play endgame. So maybe this was, uh, you know, like the, the solution. Uh, knight fd7, knight d5, attacking this pawn on e7. Knight c6, of course, just, uh, you know, defending. e6, very strong move. After bishop takes e6, just knight c7, rook d 8 takes, takes, and knight g5. This looks really terrible for black. So, of course, he took with the f pawn. Knight c7, rook a d8, and now knight takes a6. This pawn on b5 is a weak pawn. Bishop b2, rook a2, bishop f6, and now rook a d2. Maybe bishop b5 was a better option. Knight e5, rook takes, rook takes. I don't know, uh, maybe knight takes. A knight d2 also. Maybe possible knight c5, a4. It's very complicated, but I, I like for white. I don't know why, because this pawn is, you know past pawn so maybe we have some chances but let's see rook ad2 was played e5 knight c7 e4 94 and now knight takes bishop takes and after h takes g4 bishop takes d4 95 probably it will be very interesting position to to think because after 96 there is knight c4 
And yeah, it's very complicated position, but it seems that black is is on top of, of the position. Um, but yeah, h takes g4, bishop takes maybe, sorry, maybe here bishop takes e5 was a better option. Rook d2, rook d2, bishop e5, and knight takes b5. But also here g3, I don't know, It's it seems very, very uh, dangerous for, for white pieces. Yeah, I don't know. But after bishop g4, we had some luck. We had some luck. Tamir Nabati, Sindarov played the move 95. What a blunder. Rook takes d4 and the game is over. After rook takes d4, just intermediate check, bishop e6 check, and the next move will be bishop takes d4 and just piece up. So Sindarov just lost his mind and playing the move uh, 95 in this position and just lost absolutely after this one. So Tamir Nabati gives us the first win of this match 2-1. Let's go for the last game, last board we have with the white pieces. We have uh, Bohidov, of course, against Ilyas Mirin. Let's see it. e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, the Rosal Limo. And now e6 was played. So bishop takes e6, b takes, and d3 was played. Queen c7, castle, and knight e7. And I really like the move from the white uh, point of view. He played the move h4. Yeah, it's it's really nice move. I really like to play, you know, in this YouTube channel, you already know know uh, how I'm playing chess and I really like to play h4 every single game. So uh, the point here is that after knight g6, he just wants to play h5, knight f4, and now they move e5. And now, of course, the queen is not defending the knight on, h on f4. And if knight takes h5, just g4 and yeah, the knight is gone. So this was the plan uh, of uh, Vohidov. But after h4, Ilya said, okay, you know what, I will play h5, everything is under control. Uh, I am Ilya Smirin, everything is good. E5 was played, knight g6, rook e1 and f6 was played. And now, you know, Vohidov did something very strong. I, I must admit it's something that, you know, uh, it's not so easy to understand the position. I, I can admit that, um, you know, when I saw it in live stream, I didn't understand 100% what, what I'm what i looking. He's playing the move 90 bd2. And Ilya Smirin said, you know what, thank you very much. I take the pawn, queen e2, and now d6, that's it. I have like, you can see this pawn structure, very nice, but not so good because the d5 cannot be played. These two pawns are weak because I, I, I cannot play with them. Uh, also, these two pawns are really weak, right? So the, this, <laughs> you know, we, we have a very beautiful pawn structure, but all of the five pawns are really bad pawns. They cannot move, uh, they're not uh, doing something very important for black and also you know, you have two bishops and you want to open the diagonals, but you can't because of these pawns. So <laughs> I don't know if it's strengths or, or weakness. Yeah, it's very interest, interesting position to look. Knight c4 was played, knight e7, and now bishop g5. Yeah, maybe knight g5 was a little bit uh, better because f4 is the next move. And, you know, this pawn structure just will be, um, will be gone and the e6 pawn will be weak f4 just crashing all the po all the position and the king safety is not good here so bishop g5 was a little bit mistake knight g5 and f4 was a little bit uh, better knight f4 and knight f5 sorry e c3 bishop e7 takes takes a g3 castle knight g5 g6 just protecting the pawn and you know it seems to me that maybe smirin will uh, will do it good maybe Maybe he will achieve here a draw or maybe some win. Bishop a6 was played 93. Of course, white uh, don't want to exchange this bishop uh, for this knight. 93, rook a8, queen c2, king g7, and d4. This was a very strong move uh, by Vohidov. Takes knight takes f5, and now c takes d4. And you know, as you can see, this pawn is weak, this pawn is weak, this pawn is weak, and this bishop is very bad piece, uh, and this knight is just unbelievable, yeah. So e4 was played, queen takes e6, and maybe here f4 was a little bit, a little bit interesting, because, you know, you want somehow to bring this king to uh, an, a not an easy position to play, maybe bishop c8, bishop f5, bishop g4, I don't know, queen f6, maybe something in this file. So f4, it's a little bit uh, more interesting, but if was played queen c6 and now you know all all we we can say that only white can can win this position bishop d5 was played rook c1 you know this unbelievable knight against this very bad bishop queen b7 queen a5 they played some moves here 
uh, he bring the knight to f4 very soon but e3 was played yeah e3 by Ilyas Mirin was a just amazing move amazing move he understand that he must uh, bring this bishop into the game queen e7 king g8 takes queen c2 another very strong move queen b1 with queen h1 this is the checkmate threat queen e1 was played take on on a2 b4 queen b2 knight f4 is bringing the knight into the game bishop e4 and now f3 very strong move the point here that after bishop takes f3 just queen e8 check king g7 queen g6 check you know you you, you grab all the pawns here and yeah it's just winning so after f3 queen takes d4 was played king g2 queen b2 check queen f2 this was a mistake uh, king f1 i thought uh, in the game because in this position also it's it's really bad because you can take all the pawns yeah not, not, oh 96 here yeah king f6 yeah this this is winning uh, so if you're doing for example like i don't know this one just queen f7 yeah game over right the, this one and checkmate yeah yeah also this one yeah right so yeah it just checkmate on the board so yeah it's king f1 was a little bit clever uh queen f2 just takes takes bishop c6 knight takes king g7 knight f4 bishop e8 king e3 king f6 and now bishop f7 was a very strong move knight e2 king is coming here and you know th there was a little bit problem here takes d4 knight e2 king d5 you know smirin is going for it and maybe we'll have a winning position for black I don't know let's see king f6 was played bishop e8 the only move here g4 d3 king d4 and now i thought like maybe maybe vohedov will lost this game i don't know knight takes d3 the only move brilliant one takes king g5 was played and now bishop c6 attacking this pawn on f3 and the point was that after f4 just king d5 is coming into the into the game with the king f5 just bishop d7 also the only move because you know g6 king g5 f6 and you know white will win bishop d7 very strong king g6 now bishop e8 and you know three time repetition and Ilyas Mirin against Vohidov drew wow what a match what a match Uzbekistan won against Israel two and a half uh, against one and a half Ido Gorshten and Maxim Rochten lost and um, yeah unfortunately but Amir Nabati brings a very important win you know the next game will be against Island I really hope and pray for a win to Israeli national team come on you can do it you know just friends if you like this video just press the like button subscribe my channel for more chess content I uploading every single day here just content that you can just develop your chess skills so just stay tuned see you soon bye bye